guys a good morning and welcome to our midweek devotions. Since we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and the saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of your joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctified myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, O Lord.
good morning again, brothers and sisters. Now, I've been contemplating ascension, the wonderful ascension of our Lord and Savior into heaven, and uh, thinking about exciting ways in which we can have worship on Sunday, Pentecost, the birthday of the church, while we are in our various homes, not necessarily together. And uh, those thoughts really took me to life and how we're living. And the fact that many of God's children are trapped either in the past, worried about the future, and all the while just missing now. If we're missing the now, our now, that means we are not living as Christ commanded. Let your light so shine among men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father who is in heaven. If we're concerned with what has gone and worried about what is to come, we're not living and doing the things to cause our light to shine. Why? Our past is either good or bad. We either want to relive it so that we can enjoy some pleasure again or change or avoid something. Either way, the past is a ball and chain that holds us captive. When we are in prison in our past, the only aspect of our past we can bring to the present is our emotions and our attitudes, which for the most part are misplaced. Are we living or merely surviving, existing from one event to the other? Did we live Easter? Did we live Christmas? Did we open our hearts? Actually, before we get to Christmas, let us go to Advent, the beginning of our liturgical year. Did we make room for Jesus? Did we prepare our hearts and souls and minds to receive the greatest gift the world ever got? Because when we don't, Christmas becomes meaningless. It is just an occasion to eat and drink and to argue about the more logical date for Christ's birth. We get caught up in the music and the gifts and Santa Claus and the Hallmark movies and all the other things that have become the face of Christmas. All the while, missing that in the midst of the donkey, the manger, the angels singing, and the shop shepherds, that Christmas was summed up in, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send him into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So we get to Christmas, and now we're anticipating Epiphany. And January 6th arrives, and now we are checking the calendar to see how early or late Ash Wednesday is. And we begin Lent with good intentions, and pretty soon we're anticipating Palm Sunday, then Good Friday, then Easter. And that is just the religious side of us, because other aspects of our lives take on the same complexion. Are we living in our now? Are we given as much energy and thought to our present circumstances as we are given to events that have passed or not yet arrived? Right now, many are living in anticipation of returning to normal or wondering what the new normal might be. We are anticipating churches being reopened. If nothing else, this period should have taught us that we are not in control of time. Instead of waiting for churches to reopen, there is the repeated appeal for us to use this time being church. Simply put, this is our time to continue outside our walls what we preach, what we taught, what we prayed for, what we sung about, what we talked about, and generally what we practice or should have been. Ministry must extend beyond our walls. If we cannot move beyond the trauma of our church buildings being closed, we will relive this cycle. And when the churches are reopened, we may find ourselves regretting we did not do certain things during quarantine and then become worried about our future. And the process continues. Regretting the past, worrying about the future, missing the now. 
our time is now. There's a poem by Linda Ellis that has become very popular at funerals. The poem reads, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her casket from beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For the dash represents all the time she spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved her know what that little dash is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spent or dash. So spend, so think about this long and hard. Are there things you would like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what is true and real, and always try to understand the way other people feel, and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more, and love the people in our lives like we have never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remember that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Too many people, too many of us spend our dash regretting what we did, what we did not do, or looking to the future and planning to do, and in the blink of an eye, today becomes yesterday, and we realize, shucks, we were so busy planning to do that we did nothing. And again, we are back at anger and frustration and resentment and depression because we cannot relive we cannot pre-live we can only live we cannot live then or yet we can only live now it is really sad that jesus came to give us abundant life yet so many of his followers do not enjoy the life they've been given some even hate their life we have Christians who turn up Sunday after Sunday and sometimes during the course of the week who are miserable. This is an indication that we are not living in the present. In the present, we can turn to God who promised to never leave us or to forsake us, who walks with us through the valleys and shines his light to dispel the terrors of the world as mere shadows. The reality is there are things... We need to let go of things that impact on our present. Stop blaming people. To blame is an indication that we have given someone else permission to run and ruin our lives. You may have been hurt. You may have been abused. You may have been taken advantage of. You may not have been guilty Maybe you were the guilty person. But too often we allow our disappointments in others and indeed ourselves to turn to resentment and resentment to turn to hatred. We might say we don't hate because hate is a very strong word. But do we love? Do we love others? Do we love ourselves? If we will answer yes, remember, that we are not to pick and choose who we love. 1 John 3.15 Anyone who hates a brother or a sister is a murderer. And you, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in himself. We are told to forgive quickly. Don't let it fester. Consider that we are all redeemed. And this is really the difficult part about Christianity. The same person that did you wrong, God loves that person. 
Because there's nothing so special about you that sets you apart from them. We are all children of God. We are all redeemed. Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering. We need to let go of the past. We need not worry about the future. Because all we really have is now. Think of all the plans you had for 2020 that have not been realized, that will not be realized. Consider the things that have passed that we really can't do anything about other than to let go. We're done. What we have is now. Let us live now in love. Let us make good use of our dash. Amen. Let us now make a personal confession in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. O God, the lover and lover of unity and author of peace, to know you as eternal life, to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your servants, from all assaults of the enemy, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversary, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the night that is past and the gift of a new day with all its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service that at evening we may again with joy give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive, but a power which is at work among us, to him be glory in the church 
and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.